Hello, my name is Amrita Sen Mukherjee and today I'm joined with my really good friend Sarah Golding and we're going to be talking about overwhelm. Control! Today we're talking about control, we're not talking about overwhelm. Last time we talked about overwhelm, today we're talking about control. I just can't get it right today. Um, so this is a third in our summer series uh, where we're just having some uh, 10 minute conversations and we're talking to you about some of our thoughts about particular topics that might be important to people during this period where we're going through COVID. So if you're interested in what we're saying, please do look at the other couple of videos that we've recorded. The first was on fatigue. The second was on overwhelm. And today we're going to be talking about control. So Sarah, would you like to take it away? Yeah, that's fine. Um, so I think, first of all, just to say, we're both NHS portfolio GPs and we're coaches with a particular passion for well-being. Um, and we're aware that right now, there are lots of things that people are struggling with. So we're trying to pick those topics. And the reason we're talking about control today is that I think that's been one of the really key things that people are finding hard. Um, things are changing all the time. Um, what we can do, what we can't do. Somebody else other than ourselves is telling us what we can and can't do. And things are shifting rapidly. And that can be quite difficult for people to cope with when normally we're used to a, a high degree of autonomy, either in our working lives or our home lives. And certainly this isn't just aimed at people that work in the, in the well-being sector. You know, I know a lot of people have suddenly had complete changes to their work. You might have been put on furlough. You might have been made redundant. You might have been seconded to a completely different department with no say in it. So we wanted to just acknowledge how it can feel to feel that you no longer have the control in your hands. Um, Certainly, Sarah, and I know that a lot of people are feeling really, really anxious about this. They're feeling really anxious, they're feeling very upset, um, angry, and to be honest, there are a whole load of negative emotions that are coming out. And I think that's really why Sarah and I felt that it's really important to talk today to you about this topic, because what seems to be surfacing is the negative emotions around this. So how do we look after ourselves when we've got this surge of negativity how do we support ourselves when we have this negativity swirling around and how do we compartmentalize that how do we look after that acknowledge it and then deal with it and move on so i think that's really key acknowledging it focusing on it not minimizing it but then moving forward from it not letting it control us so um, I don't know if you have any thoughts about that, Sarah, if that's happened to you or if it's happened to any of the friends or family. Yeah, of you. Absolutely. And I think I'll certainly come on to that. But I was just what popped up for me was that there's also a certain group of people or some of us where there's a time at which actually not having to be in control actually has been a blessed change and a relief. And that it's OK to also look at that and say, you don't have to be having the worst time and only look at the worst aspects of what's going on right now. There have been some things that personally I've been delighted to let go of the double school runs, the after school activity, certain elements of my working life have changed. And I think some people have felt guilt and shame around being OK with that or actually things working out better for them because of the pandemic. So I just wanted to acknowledge that group because I think that can feel confusing and a bit shameful if you're if you're feeling like everybody should be suffering together so giving a little bit of respect to that but also then coming back to these these thoughts of loss of control um, and some of that is what it is they are they are thoughts and what you do have control over are your thoughts and what you do with them and one of the techniques that people find helpful and some of my coaching clients find helpful is elements of mindfulness. So getting better at learning to read what is your mind telling you? What stories are you telling yourself? So if something happens, do you automatically start telling yourself, well, of course that would happen. Everything's bad. Um, this is probably going to happen now. And, oh, it's typical because that's my, and, and we all do it. And it's quite hard to recognize those thoughts. That's a muscle that we need to develop um, because what you can do is reframe how those thoughts go. You can go, okay, that's happened. 
what are my options? Or you can say, I notice I am having an anxious thought. And it totally changes the power balance. And that's where things like um, different mindfulness apps, books, online um, things can be helpful. And we'll certainly put some of that in the notes. Ones that I found helpful are apps like Headspace or Buddhify, or I'm particularly enjoying 10% at the moment. Um, I think there's one that you're particularly fond of as well, Amy. Is that right? Uh, no, there is. There's a book called The Things We See When We Slow Down. It's written by a Buddhist monk called Heyman Sunim. And um, I think one thing that I just wanted to mention there, Sarah, was the fact that actually um, there's a difference between being mindful and mindless. And I don't mean mindless as in just, you know, carrying on um, without any purpose, but actually we can get caught into these activities where we feel like we are in control. We feel like we are making purposeful decisions, but actually we're not. We're not being mindful. We're not being in the moment. We're not making these decisions consciously. Um, and I think actually that's hugely important to, to start practicing the art of taking joy in what we do, the art of actually giving ourselves compassion and actually supporting ourselves through the decisions that we're making and saying, actually, this is something I want to do and I'm being mindful about the decisions that I'm making and linking that through to the anxiety that you were talking about that people might be feeling. And actually, I'm feeling this emotion now. I'm feeling it because of X, Y and Z that's happened in my life. I'm acknowledging it. I'm mindful of it and I'm moving forward. So not just feeling the anxiety, being mindless about why you're feeling it, um, and not moving forward from it is actually a real way of harnessing control over our own selves. Absolutely. And I think there's aspects of that. Are like There are tasks that we do in the working day that you can build into your well-being muscle. You know, we, we might, there are some things that people enjoy, some that others don't and perceive as just a chore. So, I don't know, hanging the washing out, doing some cooking, brushing your teeth. You don't have to be thinking about what the next task is. You can really experience those feelings and actually really concentrate and trying to get into that flow state, which is so relaxing and healing for our brains and everybody will find things differently. But just a reminder that actually those things that we all have to do can also be a moment of respite feels too loaded, but you know, a moment of relaxation, I suppose, or a moment you can grab for yourself. Yeah, but it's hugely important, actually, because what that does is it actually allows the prefrontal cortex, which is the front part of your brain, the part that is involved in what we call higher executive functioning. So the really cognitive part of our brain it allows that to slow down. It allows that to stop. So what that does is it allows us to get into flow. It allows us to rest. And it allows the rest of the brain to rejuvenate because as with every other muscle in the body, as with every other part of our body, the brain, the brain needs to rest. It needs to relax. So actually what mindfulness does is it promotes that healing process, that transient hypofrontality. So it's really, really important that people um, partake in these activities because if they want to, if it's something that um, resonates with them, because actually there's huge evidence behind that. So um, just wanted to kind of put out there that people really can take back the control of these negative feelings that, that, that they are having. Negativity is unfortunately a part of our life. We cannot we cannot enjoy the positives without feeling the negatives as well. Um, but it's all about control. It's all about mindset, as you said, Sarah. It's all about perspective. It's all about how we reframe things. Um, so if we are able to support you in that, then hopefully the, the books and the references that, that we have put out there uh, on the links will be able to help you. Absolutely. And I think... We're really happy for people to get in touch with us, I think, is we're, we're just drawing to a close now. Um, and so please do put some comments, ask questions. Um, we're really happy to give more resources. We know things are very different. And I just wanted to end on the fact that there are certain things that you won't have control over everything and that that's OK. Um, so thank you for joining us. What we're going to be doing next time is talking a bit about identity. So please do join us for that and do share, tag um, and comment.